How long does it take a computer to count from 1 to 2? It's a simple question. You would think it would have a simple answer, but there are many factors to consider. I mean, obviously, it depends on the computer. Are we talking about a 1982 Lisa Macintosh with only 2 megabytes of RAM? Or are we talking about the world's fastest Bitcoin miner? Well, let's just stay in the middle of the road for now. Let's say we're talking about an average computer in today's day and age, one with a decently fast processor. Well, for a computer to count from 1 to 2, it depends on the program it's running in order to do that. But let's simplify things a little bit. Let's say that we had the fastest program possible. Let's say for simplicity's sake that it took no time at all to begin running the program, and then there was no lag or anything. At that point, it would all depend on the clock cycle of the computer's processor. The clock cycle is the smallest unit of time in which a processor can form a basic task. So what does that really mean? Well, my processor runs at about 4 gigahertz, give or take. That means it takes about 0.25 nanoseconds per clock cycle. That's one four billionth of a second. So if we ignore many other factors, then it would take one four billionth of a second for my computer to count from 1 to 2. That's pretty fast. We know that it would take about 296 septillion years for a human to count to 1 decimillion. It would take about, what, 9.71 seconds between each number on average? Is that, I think that's what I said. So it, it takes a while. If my computer counted to one decillion at its max speed, max efficiency, no lag ever, it would take, uh, hold on, let's see here. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Yeah, my calculator can't calculate numbers that big. Hold on, hold on, hold on, I can figure this out. Okay. I got it. It would take about 215 sectillion seconds. That's about 4.16 sectillion minutes, which is about 69.4 quintillion hours, which is about 2.89 quintillion days, which is about 7.9 quadrillion years. Yeah, that's still a long time. I honestly thought it would be shorter. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still quite a bit less than 296 septillion years, but when you're dealing with numbers this high, they kind of lose their meaning. I mean, 7.9 quadrillion years, 296 septillion years, those are both longer than the universe has even existed. Hmm. Alright then, what about the fastest computer on Earth? Well. The fastest computer on Earth that we know of, you know, because the government's probably keeping a secret supercomputer somewhere, set the record at 9.12 gigahertz, which is about 0.11 nanoseconds per clock cycle. Which means that running at max speed, it would take about 111 sectillion, 111 quintillion, 111 quadrillion, 111 trillion, 111 billion, 111 million, 111,111 seconds. Which with some more math would be about 3.5 quadrillion years. That's still a lot of years. I mean, 7.9 quadrillion for my computer, 3.5 quadrillion for the fastest computer that we know of. I mean, it's less than half, so I guess it's better. But man, I truly thought it would be faster than that. Oh well, I guess if you really wanted to count to one decillion, you'd have to wait at least 3.5 quadrillion years. At least. So in conclusion, yeah, don't, don't count to one decillion. I mean, there's no point to it. And, in every hypothetical situation, you'd be counting long after the universe has died. Probably. I actually didn't do my research on that. How long was the how how long is the universe supposed to last? How long until the last star dies? One hundred trillion years. Yeah, it takes about a hundred trillion years until the last star dies. So yeah, you'd be counting well after that. Anyway, with that, uh, don't count to one decillion. All right. Goodbye.